So for us, last week you had uh, quite a large project due, the, the documentary news story, and I'm really looking forward to reviewing those. I'm going to be reviewing them in the next couple days. And it looks like you all took various uh, technologies and, and came up with a whole bunch of different ideas just from my first glance, but I'm going to begin reviewing those today. And I should be completely uh, finished reviewing them by Thursday or Friday. So I look forward to that and seeing kind of where your curiosity is going. This week is a little more relaxed. Um, we do have one primary assignment due. Um, it's an annotated bibliography, which I'm going to really go into in the next lecture, but it's something that many of you have probably done before, but we're going to make sure that we do it right because it can actually be an incredible tool for a developmental argument. Uh, and now is the time for you to begin exploring not just your topic and not just the guiding questions, but the argumentations that exist around your, your topic and the questions that you're asking. But for the discussion question this week, which is doing the early part, we're going to focus on fine tuning what those questions are. Now that you have collected all of this data and you've presented it, curated it in the form of a documentary and news story or an, or an investigative reporting, now is the time to really be thinking about, okay, how am I going to construct the actual argument for my research project. And that begins with constructing the questions that you actually want to answer. You probably have done some of those questions. Um, you've committed to some perhaps at the tail end of your documentary news story, but we're going to address this one more time. And so for this week, I'm asking you to read this uh, informational essay um, called uh, The Types of Claims in Argument. And in a nutshell, even though this is just arbitrary categories, but it is relevant, we have, we have five basic types of claims. And they come in two primary categories. We have truth reality claims or fact claims, and then we have values claims. And usually you have a combination of claims that really lead to the more value-based claims as Ramage articulates in the essay. But we break them down into five categories. We have definitional, we have causal, and we have resemblance, and those are all kind of bound in these kind of truth, reality, or fact claims. And then we have the evaluation ethical and the proposal claims, which are more in the realm of value-based claims. So let me go through each of them, um, kind of explain them, give an example so that this makes sense, because this is definitely related to your discussion question, which is purely generative for your sake. We'll begin with definitional. What that basically means, this kind of claim, is to which category does a thing belong? Okay. So an example of a definitional claim, let's say I'm going to, I'm trying to do a research project on Santa Clara students and their writing. Uh, prowess. So a definitional claim to what category does this thing belong? An example of that would be that Santa Clara students are good writers. Yeah. So the thing Santa Clara students belongs to the category of good writers. Yeah. And then of course you would prove that pretty basic. Okay, that's a definitional claim. 
a causal claim is very much what it kind of sounds like. What are the causes or consequences of a thing? Um, so an example of a causal claim would be that Santa Clara students are good writers because of their high school education. Let's say a lot of you went to good schools. You're from neighborhoods that have well-funded high schools, or you went to a private school, or you went to a boarding school, or you went to some fancy schmancy place, yeah? And so naturally, if you pay teachers better and the students are better prepared and have the resources to you know, to do good work and don't have a lot of stressors at home because of finances or whatever the case may be, right? People tend to become better students, aka they tend to become better writers. So that would be a causal, right? Another example of a causal claim would be the more consequential aspect. For example, Santa Clara students wind up in successful careers because they are good writers. So that would be more of a consequential aspect to a causal claim. I think we get what we're doing here, yeah? Cool. The last truth reality form of claim would be the resemblance claim, right? And this would largely be utilized when you are trying to determine the characteristics of something that you're examining. So you liken it to something else that has established characteristics already. Another way to think of it is, to what is this thing similar? Okay, the thing being Santa Clara students in our example, right? So a resemblance claim might look like this example. Santa Clara students are similar in skill to Stanford student writers, which is actually true. <laughs> um, you and Stanford tend to be the best writers in California. Um, according to a whole series of metrics, right? So this could be useful in, in an argumentation because perhaps Stanford has, because they have a master's and a PhD in written composition, right? So they examine student writing more so than Santa Clara does because we don't have a PhD in that field. Maybe they have a lot more data on the characteristics of their student writers, yes? And we could use that data because we see that certain characteristics of what makes good writers established in Stanford also apply to what makes good writers in Santa Clara students. So while we don't have a lot of data per se, or as much data as Stanford does, we can use the correlation as a way to determine certain kind of truth or reality assertions for this hypothetical examination, okay? So again, resemblance is to what is this thing similar? Make sense? So we get into the values-based claims, which are a lot more complex, right? They're not based on just evidential fact. And um, this is where a lot of your testimonial data comes in. This is where, you know, corroboration of the, the qualitative, the quantitative, and the testimonial come in, right? Value-based claims tend to be more complex. It tends to be what we truly write about, but obviously we need a combination of the different kinds of claims to create a packaged argument, yeah? So the first value-based claim would be what we call the evaluation or the ethical, and that address the question, what is the worth or value of the thing or the subject, yeah? So an example of that would be the type of writing courses at Santa Clara are good for developing skills of students, right? So we look at the value of the thing that is contributing to what makes Santa Clara writers good. Yeah, so the type of writing courses at Santa Clara are good for developing skills of students. Yeah, another way to look at this, another example would be the expectations of Santa Clara writing courses are not ethical. <laughs> Maybe you feel that way, right? But in, 
in either case, what we're doing is we're applying value to the thing itself. Now, imagine you can't just have that assertion without some fact-based um, claims coming prior to it, right? But those would be examples of evaluation or ethical claims. The last form of value-based claim would be the proposal. And a way to think of that is, what action should we take based on the information we have? Yeah? So perhaps a, a value-based claim example in my hypothetical topic would be that Santa Clara University should require a three-quarter CTW sequence. This is actually something that I would really like. Um, <laughs> maybe you disagree. But that would be a proposal, right? An action based on the data that we have, what should we take? Okay. And though that would be an example. Or, you know, Santa Clara faculty should require less work or less busy work for their CTW students in order for them to develop other aspects of good writing, like thinking, for example, okay? which is also something I believe. So these would be examples of proposal claims. Okay? What I'm gonna ask you to do for your discussion question is now that you have amalgamated some data, some context, vis-a-vis uh, -vis your documentary news story, and at the tail end of that project, you started asking some questions that might be a little bit more attenuated to what you're fascinated by that's going to become your research-based inquiry. I want you to be thinking about your subject matter in terms of a series of claims. So, the discussion question is asking you to now apply these types of claims to your subject matter that you might feel are relevant for your interest. And that way it allows you to begin sequencing a various, various forms of questions that are relevant and perhaps thinking about it in a way that you haven't before. So with whatever your subject matter is, your topic, you are to come up with a definitional claim, a causal claim, a resemblance claim, an evaluation ethical claim, and a proposal claim, but making it in the form of a question, since obviously you're still in that mode. Okay? The point of this is to just begin generating ways to think about how you can address your topic, and it might actually inspire you to go down a particular route. Now imagine that any kind of sophisticated research project is going to use a collection of these claims. It won't just be one. It'll probably be a combination of maybe utilizing all of them, utilizing most, utilizing maybe variations of two of them, yeah? But what it's doing is just allowing you to construct a series of inquiries that might be a little bit more specific to what it is that you want to examine, okay? You're gonna be sharing those questions in the discussion prompt, um, which is due on the earlier side here. And then you're going to respond to your colleagues very specifically because they might be thinking about their topic in a particular way and the more eyes we get on these questions, the more other considerations might be had. So you're going to be responding to your colleagues' questions with your own way of thinking about perhaps the topic. Asking questions, coming up with ideas, you know, this reminds me of. And we're creating a cloud of conversation around these questions so that you might ignite in your colleague another way of thinking about their topic that could excite them. So we're being very generative this week and really kind of doing the last touches on what our focus is because 
the annotated bibliography that you're going to be doing this week very much is now researching complex argumentation around your topic. And you want to be able to evaluate and be in conversation with those argumentative modes. So now is the time. Now we're getting really into the research of your particular uh, question. Cool? All right. So you're doing that discussion question on Thursday's lecture. I'm going to talk about the annotated bibliography further, but you might want to look at the assignment prompt just so that you perhaps are beginning to do that research. And I'll clarify um, what we're looking for with that annotated bibliography so that it is not busy work, that it actually is fully useful for you. And we'll go from there. Have a great beginning to your week. If you have any questions, problems, comments, uh, discoveries, you want to talk about how cute my hat is, please contact me and I'll see you later.